a hackathon's like just a really intense weekend of experimental R&D and you're just trying to build a prototype really quickly and you're just collaborating with loads of people and just throwing stuff at the wall and I, I love them, I've been doing them for about six years. Uh, this is actually my first time participating in a, in a hackathon. Uh, the idea of participating in one always intimidated me so I stayed away from it. Uh, but yeah, just to let anyone who hasn't uh, you know, worked on something like this before it is meeting with people who have very different ideas from you do and who have very different skill sets uh from you and can actually help you speed up your uh you know thought process so it would be a great experience for anyone to join i enjoyed the simple theme of the hackathon because it was not some hardcore uh investigative investigative uh, development or research and development but just simple accessibility. I'm Lawrence, I'm a machine learning engineer and I've been in the industry for about six years. Uh, my name is Myth or Maithili and uh, I'm a data scientist and I have been a data scientist for about three years now. I'm Ada, I work in like care mostly and mental health care specifically so like when I came into the hackathon I was looking to work on something like mental health related. I have a bit of a background in web development so join them up. Okay. Hi, I'm Isha, and I have very little experience in social field, synth fields, only in CTFs when I was young. I'm Michael, I'm a geospatial software engineer, but my background is actually in civil engineering. And then in my master's, I studied remote sensing and geoinformatics in Stalin program. My name is Alexandra, and actually I'm a legal professional, um, and I have a background in international humanitarian law and human rights. Our team had some expertise in working with geodata, but also legal backgrounds, so we thought how we could combine that to create something useful. The idea of SketchMapper is to make it easy for users to geolocate photos. So what they can do with our tool is to sketch a scene, to sketch it from above the roads that are present there, the geometry of the buildings and so on. And this tool then attempts to geolocate the scene in a map. If we could, if we would continue working on our project, we would try to implement more data. And now we have implemented some simple features to detect scenes, such as curvatures of roads, the structure of the buildings, the length of the roads and so on. And we would try to implement more complex features, the angles between different objects, the um, number of um, of floors, of buildings, there are a lot of features that could already also be implemented to make the matching even more detailed. And of course, we just started with one city, the city of Bakhmut. So of course, we would add other cities to make this tool globally accessible and useful. The work is running on a server. It can be accessed with a link. And also the code is available on GitHub, it's totally open source. It is even possible to self-host our system, but for that we need to set up a database to import some data. If someone is interested, this is also possible. So let us know. Sometimes when journalists or other people are doing investigative work, they have to look at images which are quite traumatic or detailed and you do not want to see the whole image. Um, and so there's a lot of extensions out there which exist to blur images, so you don't have to be constantly exposed to them. Uh, but sometimes you might want to see part of an image without being exposed to the whole image. So this extension allows you to blur it, but also allows you to turn it grayscale or rotate or change the colors in the image. And then it also allows you to zoom in a little bit over a little bit of the image to identify in detail which you might want to see without having to be exposed to the whole image. And when you install it, immediately you will get a little drop down, which looks like this in your browser. Uh, they'll all be unticked by default and you will get something like this. If you want to blur every image on a page, you press blur. If you want to make an image grayscale on a page, you press grayscale. Um, if you want to change your colors on the image, you can change your colors on the image. Um, and then hopefully soon we have the extension loaded into Chrome and Firefox web stores, but we're waiting for their approval. Um, right now, there's a file on the GitHub link called a CRX, which you can drag and drop into your browser and either Firefox or Chrome will install that extension for you. It will give you a security warning and you have to click to accept on the security warning, but that's how you install it. Like, over the next few weeks I'm going to be adding more features. At the moment this works on just images, uh, but we're going to add features for video 
to work on it. I'm also hopefully going to look at making it a little more robust because sometimes images sneak through at the moment, which is a problem. Um, and I'm going to work on improving the UI. As we can see, it's a little boring at the moment. Uh, it's not like a, some hardcore open source boot. I'm completely beginning, beginner in open source. I maybe contribute to a few projects. And I think the best thing is start small, like do some small thing or small fix like I did. Because uh, it could be very discouraging uh, when you have super big uh, chunk of work that needs to be done and you cannot complete it because it's hard, time consuming, etc. My idea in a nutshell, very dumb and simple. I just took a tool that I saw has some inconvenient flow. For example, that researcher need to go and copy something from the developer console and I just automated it. Okay, uh, original tool we are collecting Instagram geotags in certain location, but after my uh, mingling with it, it was still doing the same, but a bit simpler for end user. Uh, when billing cat uh, reviewer will review my pull request and merge it, uh, users could just use Instagram location search tool and it would be already incorporated in it. I think tools like this are needed in general for not only investigative journalism, but uh, for example, I was using them in everyday life, like no hardcore ones, but simple ones like Maltego, for example, and etc. And um, it's nice things that they are in open source, so uh, community itself would build, build out a tooling for convenience of many people, not only investigative journalists. Over the last few years, I've worked a bunch of jobs that I haven't found super personally meaningful. Uh, and so I'm just really looking to use my technical skills to do something important that actually helps people. Um, so in my case, I had a very specific uh, you know, project that I wanted to develop. And I was looking for both partners and also a platform where I could test this out and see if it, if it made sense, one, to build it for myself, but also if it would be useful to others and you know if anyone else would resonate with it so i had this template in mind and i was looking for a place where i could you know um, uh, i could brainstorm this idea with someone who had a little more knowledge than i did the main purpose of this project is to make a you know a, a big powerful organization a little more transparent to the outer world and here specifically i'm speaking about uh, you know the military and it could be Indian and going forward, it could be Nigerian, American, uh, whatever, you know, whichever country we are focusing on. The idea is to be able to make an organization a little more transparent to people who want to know a little more about it. So we, we wanted to bring together, you know, a lot of the data that's openly available and scattered on the internet and different websites and bring it together in a place that people can use a front end to be able to interact with it a little more easily. So yeah, we made this tool which creates a reverse document search where you can submit a tribunal judgment from one of the regions and you can then get a look at like similar other re other judgments and this can be used to sort of explore, you know, okay, this particular thing has gone wrong here, who else is struggling with this, can we identify patterns in the judgments that are coming out of these courts that are sort of showing some particular sort of systematic issues. So to do this uh, and like create a kind of transparent index that you can kind of search of these cases that have happened in the Indian sort of army tribunal system, we were using some cutting edge sort of NLP techniques, so some of the latest open AI uh, sort of NLP models. So we, you know, created embeddings so we could, you know, find documents that are similar to each other and we could automatically sum summarize them so we can try and just like speed up the work of people who are sort of exploring you know judgments of a particular type and you know what else is going on there and just you know just create a sort of searchable index really it is it is cool
If you want to um, use the tool and have a go with it, you can check it out on our GitHub and there's a link to where we've got it deployed online. It's just a web application. So from a technical perspective, yeah, we want to improve the uh, search search functionality so we can have a you know sort of plain text sort of Google style query and that'll just you know look through a uh, sort of database of our tribunals. So hopefully that can be quite a powerful tool for searching it and sort of adding filtering tools. Um, yeah, in terms of you know it is a hackathon. We only had a weekend to do it, so it was very much a hack job. Uh, the databases are just CSV files that are loaded into memory locally on the server. Um, so, you know, there's, you know, proper infrastructure we put this on for the future, which can make it, you know, much faster and sort of allow us to scale this as we kind of uh, expand. You know, we also only have indexed uh, sort of about 9,000 tribunal judgments from sort of the Chandigarh region in India. So there's, there's actually a load more of these judgments that we want to index. Uh, which sort of cover, you know, the rest of India. There's probably another 40,000, something like that, uh, cases we need to index. And so for that, yeah, we need to use some slightly more proper infrastructure for our back end. Yeah, I was really very happy because this was my first hackathon to begin with. But also I was, I was actually applying for funding and I was writing to different universities and institutions to see if I could, you know, get this project some support. And so to realize that we won this hackathon was a very good, uh, news for us. Well-designed accessible tools mean that it's not limited to people with coding skills to kind of do this and the more people who can access more open information. I think it was general, I think it was a great experience to participate in the hackathon because we learned more about OSINT. We didn't really know much about it. So we really had a chance to go get inside that and to try to develop something useful for this community. I think the best thing um, about the hackathon was to actually support really important work. So work what is being done with OSINT is something that we really like to support for a long time. That was a chance for us to do so. And I think what we really enjoyed both was the discussions that we had about the two and the freedom that we had to implement our ideas and to create something really useful, at least we hope so.